We are continuing to follow the breaking news out of Kansas City, Missouri, where one person has been killed and several others wounded in a shooting near the Kansas City Chiefs football team's championship Super Bowl parade. At least 10 people were taken to hospitals in the area. Kansas City police say the two suspects have been detained and remain in custody. Officials say that was possibly the shooting, that is, related to an argument that turned violent. The shooting, authorities now say, does not appear to be related to terrorism or extremism, at least in terms of motives. I want to bring in now Sam Vinograd. Sam is a CBS News contributor and former assistant secretary for counterterrorism, threat prevention, and law enforcement policy for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Sam, there is lots to go over here, but your big picture thoughts on what we have seen unfolding. And one thing it bears pointing out, we can now add Super Bowl celebratory parades to the places in America once assumed safe from gun violence that no, now can no longer be assumed to be safe from gun violence. Major, I've lost count of how many mass shootings I've responded to, and the lesson is very clear. Nowhere is safe from gun violence at this point. And that's not because law enforcement is not doing everything possible to safeguard the American people. In this case, we look at this parade, over 800 mm -hmm. law enforcement personnel from a range of federal entities and otherwise, and still what appears to be a personal dispute turned violent and hurt so many victims. And let's talk about this kind of event. You know, because of your experience, how Kansas City Police and its cooperative other agencies in the area plan for this. It's an outdoor event. It's the culmination of a parade. It has a central location. But it's not a place where magnetometers can be deployed. You have to assume and you hope as a planning law enforcement entity the people are not going to break out their weapons and start shooting one another. But you have to assume that is at least a possibility. Therefore, then you have to intervene and then try to get people safely out. Complex situation. Complex situation. I will say that law enforcement personnel try to plan for a variety of contingencies, including a dispute that breaks out at a mass entity, a mass entity event like a parade. But unfortunately, there's just too many unknown circumstances that can unfold like this one. So while law enforcement more than likely tried to prepare for a situation like this, they can't cover every single circumstance that can break out. So, for example, in this case, if a shooting breaks out in a parking garage, you can't account for exactly how people are going to flee, what underlying health conditions people may have as they're trying to escape from violence. And that's where you start seeing more casualties, more psychological trauma, and ultimately more of a catastrophe for the community. Some basics of this event. A crowd estimated around a million. Dignitaries there, the mayor of Kansas City, Quentin Lucas, the governor of Missouri, Mike Parsons, and his wife. All of the Kansas City Chiefs players, personnel, all of them escaped safely. But as the mayor said in the first press conference, and I want to let our audience know, 6 o'clock Eastern time, there is scheduled to be another update from local authorities in Kansas City. We will, of course, bring that to you live. But the mayor said he had to run, mm -hmm. felt in danger. Some of those who were covering the event for the NFL Network have put on social media that they ducked and covered underneath the stage. Lots of people ran pell-mell in various different directions. Among the injured, maybe those not shot, but injured fleeing. Mm -hmm. All of this goes to the very nature of panic that justifiably ensues when gunshots break out in a, in a crowded area. Most certainly, and I will say that for a situation like a Super Bowl parade, there are various different security perimeters that are set up based upon proximity to VIPs, proximity to the parade itself. So, for example, while a parking garage is, of course, associated with the parade, there may have been different security protocols in place for that particular area. Now, inspection, looking for people with guns, pat-downs, non-intrusive inspection techniques are used for certain mass density events. We don't know if they were in place for any of the perimeters here, but this did happen seemingly on the margins of the parade, but close enough that there were a variety of individuals nearby. So those in the audience who may watch uh, crime shows or watch a spy movie or two might know the term eyes on for that area nearest Union Station where the dignitaries are. Would you assume in the planning, we don't know, and I'm not asking you to confirm anything, but would you assume there would be some manner of eyes on at least that part of the parade and celebratory area? 
Well, this doesn't appear to be a matter of eyes on, and I do think we should wait to see how the investigation unfolds. But uh, in this case, we don't know if the individuals who perpetrated the shootings, for example, had concealed carry licenses. We don't know how these weapons made their way into the parking garage, whether they were visible at any point over the course of the day or not. What we do know is that there's one deceased and many more injured physically, not to mention the psychological trauma. I do imagine that we will learn more about the suspects in, if not the press conference that's happening later tonight over the following hours. Right now, what's happening, Major, is a huge degree of cooperation to give medical assistance, to investigate what's happened, and to get uh, psychological support resources to individuals that were impacted, both from federal entities as well as state and local ones. When there is an event of this nature and everyone is converging to try to find motives and eliminate the ones that are most frightening as rapidly as possible, meaning terrorism or extremism, how is that done? How is that process built out so authorities can look to the public and say, well, we've eliminated this, we've eliminated that? Well, typically when a suspect is apprehended or when there is a lead on a suspect, that suspect's uh, identity is run through various data sets to see if they have any known terrorism-related links, if they have an arrest record. Then at times there's open source investigation that's done on an individual's social media to say if they've used any rhetoric that suggests that they have a tie to terrorism. In other cases, witness testimony can flag what ensued, how an altercation may or may not have broken out, what was said that led to guns being drawn. So it's a variety of different investigatory techniques that are used to help ascertain motive. Sam, stay with me, please. I want to bring in Ed O'Keefe, who is our senior White House and political correspondent joining us from the North Lawn of the White House. Ed, what can you tell us about the briefing given to the president, such as you know about it, or any other details from the White House perspective? So many times, Ranger, we've had to repeat these words that, in fact, the White House is monitoring the situation and providing federal assistance to state and local authorities. That's what's happened again here today. Uh, the president learned about it this afternoon. Uh, there is an Office of Gun Violence Prevention that's been established uh, by this administration that tracks these kinds of incidents and provides assistance to communities should they need it. Uh, in, in this case, it being a larger city and a larger event, there would have been more federal eyes on this uh, event anyway. Uh, so it's unclear, at least so far, and we've asked what that uh, new office has been up to today in responding and monitoring to this situation. Uh, but as you said, it, it's yet another incident and another kind of mark of American society that's had to deal with gun violence today. And in watching the coverage throughout the day, you could just see how upsetting this was for Kansas City's Chiefs fans and those that were in attendance uh, to have to know that at the end of it, it ended this way. Yeah, as I'm sure you took note, the mayor of Kansas City said, I'm angry. The police chief of Kansas City said, I'm angry. The police chief, Stacey Graves, said, this is not Kansas City. It may not be. And I certainly, having traveled to Kansas City many times, know that it's not Kansas City writ large, but it happened nonetheless. And I know that at when I covered the Obama White House at times like this, and I'm sure you feel it at the Biden White House, there is a sense of powerlessness at moments like this. Absolutely. And, and, and you know, it's, it's something that they've had to respond to too many times over the last three years or so. It's part of why they stood up that new Office of Gun Violence Prevention to help communities, not only in the immediate aftermath of one of these shootings, uh, but over the several weeks or months after. And they're more, cons I think, more focused on assisting places like Uvalde, Texas, or other smaller communities that may have suddenly seen this kind of mass violence occur. Uh, not to diminish at all uh, the importance or the seriousness of what happened in Kansas City today, but to provide resources to places that may not be as prepared uh, for what comes after this kind of violence. So we'll see if we hear anything more from the president of the White House uh, through the rest of tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but again, as, as I said at the beginning, it, it was the sort of typical White House response, which is we're aware of it, we're monitoring it, we've offered assistance, uh, and, and we're obviously uh, upset about what transpired. Ed O'Keefe at the North Lawn of the White House Force. Thanks so much, Sam. I want to go back to you. So, as you know from your experience in government, events like this reshape future events like this. So the next time there's going to be a Super Bowl parade, there's going to be a different approach, right? Well, we unfortunately use these mass casualty events to inform security planning going forward. What I will say that right now, focused on the right now, 
the federal government is certainly offering support to state and local authorities. But in a moment like this, we often knew that state and local authorities were focused on act actively stabilizing the scene and making sure that any injuries were contained. So in the coming hours, in the next day, we may, have, we may hear more specifics from the White House about what resources are being sent at the federal level. We have to keep in mind this shooting just occurred. The state and local authorities are really focused on getting medical support to those impacted and stabilizing the scene. So there's a lot we don't know right now. And as we move through the night, I would imagine we'll hear more from the White House about what they're providing. I work closely with the Office of Gun Violence Prevention. They provide resources all across the country to help uh, make communities more resilient in the aftermath of an attack like this, while the security professionals will carefully examine what vulnerability allowed this contingency to occur so that we try to avoid it happening again. Sam Vinograd, thank you so very much for all your expertise. And also our thanks to Ed O'Keefe and the North Lawn of the White House.